Hi, we're still working on we're still working on multiple regression. Um, so far, we've looked at uh, dummy variables briefly, looked at basic multiple linear regression, coming up with estimated uh, regression equations. Um, now we're going to look at an example where we uh, we use our results from our regression to develop a residual plot, and look at the residual plot and the scatter diagram to try to see whether or not uh, the regression the assumptions on our regression model uh, look good. Um, so this is the uh, the problem we're doing. It's it's from the Anderson textbook. It's chapter 16, problem 7. Um, I'm going to read the question, and then I'll go through, and we'll, we'll walk through it. Okay. So almost all U.S. light rail systems use electric cars that run on tracks built at street level. According to the Federal Transit Administration, light rail is one of the safest modes of travel, with an accident rate of 0 0.99 accidents per million passenger miles, as compared to 2.29 for buses. The following data show the miles of track and the weekday ridership in thousands of passengers for selected light rail systems. All right, let's look at the data first, and then we'll read the, the parts of the question. Okay, so we have we have 17 data points. The count down here 17 tells us we have 17 observations. Uh, 17 cities. Each one has a number uh, here for miles of light rail track. And then uh, the question tells us this is thousands of riders, weekday riders. So some data here. Um, we're going to look at a relationship between these two. Um, and part A is asking us to develop a scatter diagram for these data. Uh, treating the number of miles of track as the independent variable. Does a simple linear regression model appear to be appropriate? All right. So uh, Excel makes it very easy to create a scatter diagram. We just select our two columns of data. Uh, it always interprets the first column. The left column is X and the right column is Y. So once you have them ordered properly, it's very easy. You can just click Insert Scatter. Um, I want just dots, scatter with only markers. Uh, and there we go. That's what it looks like. OK. All right, now, by default, it has the Y variable at the top and in the legend. I don't really like it there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one and delete this one, and then I'm going to go into Layout. I like to have my axis titles. If we go to Axis Titles, our primary horizontal axis title, I like that one below my axis. This is the X axis. This is the independent variable, so there's miles. And then we're going to have a vertical axis rotated, so we'll have this riders thousands is actually weekday riders so okay in any case that formats it we can take a look and see what what whether or not uh, our data looks like it, it fit, fits uh, simple linear assumptions um, you can kind of see that when we have our data here it fits inside of like a cone like this that's not a I mean it's, a, it's an increasing relationship but it's not exactly a linear relationship. Uh, what, what this really says is, is that our errors, we're supposed to have a straight line, but our errors are going to be different over here than they are over here, right? The random error changes. Um, so this is a non-constant variance. Uh, so our assumption on, so this sigma squared is not constant. That's not good. It means that we're going to have non-constant variance. Okay. What that means is that we don't actually want to use a linear model, and we can tell that by looking at this uh, at this uh, scatter diagram. Um, let's go back to the problem. Part B says use a simple linear regression model uh, to develop an estimated regression equation to predict the weekday ridership. Uh, construct a standardized residual plot based upon the standardized re residual plot. Does a simple linear regression model appear to be appropriate? So Excel allows you to create residual plots. They're not technically standardized residual plots. You don't really need a standardized residual plot for our purposes. We just need to get an idea. So let's go back to our data. We're going to do a run a regression, and we're going to ask it to give us a residual plot when it's done. You can do this anytime you do a regression. Uh, we click on the data, data tab over to data analysis. Uh, it gives us this little window. Scroll down to regression, click OK. And what do we want? Well, our dependent variable is riders, so we're going to select this for our input Y range. And our independent variable is miles. I have the labels in there. I'm using a model that looks like this, riders equals a function of miles. So I have riders on the left-hand side and miles on the right-hand side. I want residuals and residual plots. Uh, I can also get standardized residuals, might as well. Okay, when we click OK, it gives us a new tab. 
The top looks the same, but if we scroll down, you can see that we have some residual output. So for each observation, which is, uh, our, you know, each one of these is a different city. They're in the same order as they were on the uh, previous, on the data tab. We have predicted riders. Those are our predictions. We have our residuals, and we have our standard residuals. Um, standard residuals just divide is just standardized. It divides residuals by the standard deviation of this column. Okay. In addition, and this is what we really want to take a look at, we have this right here. So this is our residual plot. And you can see that, uh, again, we have the same kind of, if we were to if we were try to look at this data, it should be shaped like this. Right, everything within here kind of. But it's not. Instead, we have a very tight fit over in the back end, and it, it spreads out as we go out. That's non-constant variance. Now, one way to handle that is to do, do well, the ways that we usually handle that is to transform our dependent variable. Um, the way we're going to deal with it right now is we're going to transform y. Let's see what it asks us to do. So part C, perform a logarithmic transformation on the dependent variable. Develop an estimated regression equation using the transformed dependent variable. Do the model assumptions appear to be satisfied by using the transformed dependent variable? Let's take a look. First, we need to transform our variable. We go to data, and they want us to create do a logarithmic transformation. So let's uh, move our graph over a little bit. I'm going to create a variable called log uh, log underscore writers. And in each case, this is just going to be the log ln returns the natural logarithm of writers. You could also do it like this log where you put in a base. Um, that w that's another different kind of logarithmic transformation, uh, but both will have the same result. Okay, now I did this once. I want I can either copy and paste this each place, and it'll copy down, or I can select the whole thing, and hold Control and press D, and it automatically fills it down. So it copies and pastes into every cell. So that's my log riders. So that's the logarithmic transform, and that's done. Um, now the model that we had in riders equals miles was just this. It looked like this. Uh, let me get my ink up. It was just uh, riders equals beta 0 plus beta 1 miles plus epsilon. Now, if I estimate this new one, it's estimating a different model. I'll show you what it looks like once I get the res results. So let's go to data, data analysis, uh, regression. All we're changing here is our y variable. Instead of using riders, we're going to use the log riders as our y variable. Um, okay, D1 through D18 labels. Now we're using a different model. And so I'm going to change the name. Log riders equal, is on the left side, miles is on the right side. And this is what we get. Now this, this model looks like this. Now we have log riders equals beta 0 plus beta 1 miles plus epsilon. When we run this, we get an estimate on miles right here. And the way we interpret this when we have a log transformation is that a one one unit increase in miles, when miles goes up by one, then uh, then the, the ridership goes up by 3.5, 3.6%. So that's the percent increase. That's A log transformation is something you use often when you think it, it, it grows that each additional thing makes it grow with a base, makes the dependent variable grow. Okay, this is our residual plot, and we can take a look at it and see what we see. Does it look pretty good? It looks pretty good. Uh, it looks like we have relatively constant variance. You know, there's some oddities on this on this this side over here, but nothing terrible. Um, certainly much better than the. Uh, if I go back to the previous tab, you can see that. That, that, that definitely looked more conical. This one looks better. Um, then the the R-square is also higher, too, so it's a better model by a number of criteria, right? The adjusted R-square here is 0.64. That's with our log model. Our previous model had 0.49. Is that what it... Oh, it wanted us to come up with uh, estimated regression equations for both of these. Um, you can do that if you want. Uh, right now, the, the point that I'm trying to... Well, hell, I'll show it to you. Why not? Okay, so the estimated regression equation for our log model is this. Uh, our predicted log riders 
log riders hat equals 2.586 plus 0 0.3567 times miles. Okay, so that's times miles. So that's our estimated regression equation here. You just need to know what the model is. Over here with our linear case, um, I'm running a little low on time, so I'll leave that as an exercise to you guys. Um, perform a reciprocal transformation on the dependent variable, part D. Develop an estimated regression equation using the transform dependent variable. Okay, now I'm going to create another variable called 1 overriders, and it's just equals 1 divided by my riders, C2. Now I'm going to select this whole thing, hold control and press D. You can see that now we have a reciprocal. Um, I'm going to estimate this, the regression. Our input now is this column, uh, or uh, that's our y. Our x is still the same, it's still miles. That's still our only right side variable. Um, and now we have, it won't let us do, uh, it won't let us put slashes in the names of new worksheets. So I'm going to call it recip riders. So that I know on the left side I have the reciprocal of riders. Everything else stays the same. Click OK. We have a new model estimated. And the R square here you see is not, not as good as it was with log. In addition, this residual plot, eh, I don't like it. We have something going on here. It's hard to know exactly what it is. Um, but this looks like there's an outlier, right? And then we got some kind of increasing relationship, maybe. I don't know. It looks like there's definitely some kind of path here that I don't like. Um, so I'm not sure that, that the, uh, the reciprocal relationship really gives us good errors, you know, that our assumptions are well-founded. Um, that said, we could, you know, we can come up with predictions and take a look. So predicted one over riders. You can take the inverse of this and figure out what our estimated ridership is in each case. That gives us an estimate of riders. We have negative 100, negative 313 riders. <laughs> that might be why we have, we have some bad problems with our predictions. Um, in any case, this is one way to, to transform our data um, using the reciprocal transformation. Um, finally, what estimated regression equation would you recommend and explain? Well, the adjusted R squared on the linear one is 0.49, and the residuals don't appear to have constant variance. So I don't really like this one so much. Um, for the reciprocal, actually, we do, we do worse with our predictions than with the uh, the linear model. And again, there's some kind of linear relationship here, so uh, or some kind of orderly relationship. We don't want there to be order. We want it just to be random noise, normally distributed, ideally. Um, the log transformation looks pretty good. The adjusted R squared was 0.64, which considering we only have one, uh, one, one regressor, that's a pretty good fit, miles and miles and riders. Um, there might be something going on with the data, but it doesn't really look like it. It looks like they're normally distributed. Uh, yeah, so so I, I'd say that I would go with the log transformation. And again, you know, it's up to you. Um, but but yeah, that's 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 what I think is the best uh, the best model here. So the uh, this is the, this equation right here is the one that I would use if I was going to try to estimate the number of riders. All right, so that's uh, transforming the dependent variable, looking at you know residual plots and trying to figure out what the best model is. Stay tuned. I'll have some more videos for you soon. Thanks. Bye.